welcome to Out of the Box Radio with me, your host, Christine Blasdale. Out of the Box Radio is a weekly podcast of audible ear candy dedicated to bringing a fresh perspective on this thing that we call life. And each and every week, we're going to be diving into the topics that matter most with lively conversations on issues such as health, wellness, and transformational healing, all with the goal of creating a better world and becoming a happier human being. I will be your tour guide for this epic adventure, and each and every week we're going to be embarking on a journey with the ultimate goal being transformation to our highest potential. And now, let's get out of the box. So I'm here, Roseanne, Sherry, Barr. Here I go, here I go. Here I go, running for president. I was like, what is she doing now? She approaches socially relevant causes in a manner that most politicians would run away from. We want marijuana legal! I want to reinstate the blessed and holy guillotine! Granny's back on the pipe. I'm uniquely qualified to serve the American people because I was a waitress for 15 years. She had a vision of what she was trying to say to America, about America, and she was willing to fight the fight. You know, everybody knows Roseanne Barr. I'm the only serious comedian in this race. You could really get people thinking about the fact that this two-party system is really a bit of a con. Can't they see? Can't they see that nobody's going to vote for Jill Stein? It never dawned on me that the functionaries of the party would reject Roseanne Barr. I wasn't shut up by networks or nothing else. I won't be shut up here either. But you're right, I don't want to just attack. I really just want to attack. With the, the gin and tonic in this hand and the blunt in this hand, She hasn't forgot where she came from. To choose a lesser evil is no damn choice at all, ladies and gentlemen. Wake up! Wake up! Can an intelligent woman win in a really stupid, rigged system? Uh, We'll find out. Uh. (laughs) I'm killing. Hello everyone, I'm Christine Blasdell, and that was a clip from the new film, Roseanne for President, which I believe is available on DVD. It was in select cities nationwide, and it's now out on DVD. And this is the really the behind-the-scenes true story of Roseanne Barr's third-party run for the highest office of the land in 2012. Yes, that's right. She actually ran for president on the Peace and Freedom Party ticket. And well, with all the you know recent election activity mayhem that we've had going on and the rise of one Donald J. Trump as our next commander in chief, I thought it would be a wonderful opportunity to speak with Roseanne directly, not only about uh, Trump and Hillary Clinton as well, but the whole two party system and whatever the hell she wants to talk about. We're, we're going to get yeah. into that. <laughs> and um, I, I was really honored to produce Roseanne on her own radio show at the Pacifica Radio Network a few years ago. And I'll tell you, if I know anything, she has no problem expressing her opinion. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome to Out of the Box Radio, my lovely friend, my fellow Scorpio, and really the original sitcom queen of badass herself, the wonderful Roseanne Roseanne Barr. Welcome, Roseanne. Hey, thanks a lot, Christine. So the obvious thing, we're all sort of kind of reeling from this, and I don't know where you're at on the spectrum I have an idea. <laughs> Donald, the, Donald the Trump. The autism spectrum. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I sort of feel that's part of it, too. But, uh, well, I'm just happier than hell. I've been, uh, what do you call it, celebrating all day. So I have to apologize if I sound a little drunk and such. <laughs> I, I am. I've just been celebrating with my boyfriend, Johnny, all day since last night. And, uh, you know, I'm just so happy. And, um, you know, but I am sad in a way because of all my uh, 
friends have been calling and family members. They've been calling me all day and saying, oh, they're so upset and they're so afraid. And, and uh, you know, they really think that it's a bad thing. And they're asking me why I, well, first of all, they asked me how I could possibly have supported Donald Trump. And they're kind of offended and pissed off about it. Uh, and also, then after that settled in a while, the next thing they asked me was, well, what what are some of your positive uh, thoughts about it? You know, they kind of wanted to know or hear curious. the other side. Right, right. You know, after the initial, the initial shock, and they're like, look, I'm gay, I'm out of here, I'm moving to another country immediately, I already have my tickets, I have property bought. He's going to kill all the gays all, and, all, you know, a lot of people of color are saying that, too. They're, they're getting the hell out of here, and they're just terrified, you know. But, uh, you, you know, uh, so that makes me sad because they don't know what a great thing it is yet. But I think they will learn it. I think they'll back into it in, in a few months when their lives are better. And I, I do think that's what will happen. And uh, I wish I wish they could um, I wish that they could hear it. I think they will hear it, but they're just not hearing it now. And I think the reason why they're not hearing it now is, you know, because they're under heavy MK Ultra mind control, and they they bought the party line. And you know, uh, every day on television, they they were telling them, you know, cor- cor- corporate on media was telling them that. You know, uh, he's a racist and, uh, you know, that he, that he hates, he's going to, you know, those are not things he said. And, uh, and, it, it, and if they came close to sounding like that, they were completely taken out of context. But it kind of makes me sad because then people didn't investigate any further. Once they heard the imposed term racist, or uh, homophobic, or a lot of other code words that, you know, we've been programmed by uh, mind control of, of our, uh, of bad, bad people, I'm just going to say bad, bad people with bad intent. Uh, you know, they hear these code words, and code words, if you know about MK Ultra mind control or any kind of mind control, Yep. MK Ultra, of course, being the most successful one. Uh, when you when you study it and you know about how code words work and the and the absolute power of words, um, to you you sometimes it's to make people act. Some code words make people act, and other code words uh, make people silent. So you know nobody wants to be called a racist. Or a homophobe, or uh, you know, and and you know, I don't know, if, uh, you know, they don't want to be called a hater or an ignorant mm-hmm. bigot, you know. And so, once they hear that, they think it's true. No matter if they were saying that about, you know, anybody. Uh, well, the fear Anybody machine at all. Just the accusation itself is so powerful that yeah. it it evokes a, a response. Well, I know with the initial. I mean, I, I'm I'm just looking on social media, and people are losing their minds. Yeah. I mean, people who are actually like were, were pretty progressive, nice, you know, uh-huh. folk. Right. They're 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 posting stuff like you know, fuck you if you were if you voted third party or you didn't vote for Hillary Clinton. Da 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 da. Uh-huh. And I mean, m- personally, well, that show, uh, yeah, but that's like so telling because it's showing who she is and who her followers are. And I don't think I don't think they have uh, very much depth or self awareness because no no victim of you know mind control does. They just. You know, they're just operatives. They're activated operatives who who are activated by code words. And so it, it's very, very uh, interesting to me to, to have seen it. And that, that's why I like Twitter, too, because 
you can see how code words activate people. Um, you know, you can see the, the extremes of that. And over the last, what is it, 18 months that we had this election, and for me, longer, because I learned, you know, I learned it the hard way by <laughs> by running for president uh, of yes. what they do and how they censor and shut down um, you know, really, it's dissent. And they don't like whistleblowers either at all. No, they don't. <laughs> no, they don't. And, uh, no, so they have their words that they can use. And, you know, you call somebody, you know, I saw what they do. I mean, I, I've been, like, really, I'm, I, I am on the autism spectrum, so I do concentrate on one thing for way too long until I figure it out. And I'm fascinated by it. And, uh, I was fascinated uh, for a long time at how um, the use of code words is is so important to, um, well, every basic social experiment, you know? Well, let's talk it's about... It's Pavlovian. Yeah, of course, of course. And I've seen it through the course of this election. And then even with mm-hmm. WikiLeaks and Julian Assange, uh, you know, uh, equ- yeah. equating Russia. And, and all they had to do is say Putin... Uh, Julian Assange yeah. or, or Russia is now interfering with our elections, and that is such bull. But they put it out there, and I, I know. And like I said, it. well, uh, Russia didn't make Hillary steal the election from Bernie. Uh, I mean, the nomination. Russia didn't do that. That's right. Russia didn't steal the nomination from Bernie using uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who had to resign for doing it, and then the very next day, Hillary hires her. That's, I mean, come yeah, on, yeah, how transparent blatant. is that shit? And then they're like, you know, well, he's a racist. I mean, and it isn't even true. They just bought them all off. And, you know, they're terrified that, you know, the, the racists are going to come for them. But they, you know, here, here's the thing. When you're, when you're like, um, listen, this is a better way of saying it. When... When power not only manufactures consent, we all know what that means, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And it's also manufacturing dissent. You ought to take a real fucking close look at that for a minute or two. You ought to take a real close look at that. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, fortunately, I think working class people did that exact thing. And, uh, you know, uh, they they finally realized i mean i i think it was a coup on bullshit you know i said that in my campaign in 2012 uh, that i would declare bullshit illegal and i think that's what just happened uh working class people working people uh non-academic working people you know the people who do the real work that makes shit go Mm -hmm. uh they just went this is all bullshit and you know I don't give a fuck. I'm not. Well, I'm not going along with it. And they just said, fuck you. And it's just great. Because that was fucking centuries in the making. And I just love it. Now, we, you had talked about, um, you know, obviously, too, you're, 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 we're happy. I'm, I'm, I myself am very happy that Hillary is not uh, going into the White House and I, and, and the powers Could that... Could you believe that shit? Oh I, my God. I, they sh- really did. The they the really up. did. She exposed her own fucking self, though. Aside from the whole WikiLeaks thing and all the layers of that, of, of, of the layers of corruption around her that have always been there uh, and always hidden, too. I mean, she managed to just get away with so much for so long. Both her and, and uh, Bill. You know, because they're protected. Huh? Both her and Bill. The whole Clinton Foundation. Oh, yeah. They, I, I still can't believe the fact that, and here it is, we have we have more and more exposure about the whole uh, Clinton, uh, Jeffrey Epstein, or Epstein mm-hmm. connection, this guy who's a billionaire pedophile, and the... Convicted. Convicted, convicted pedophile. Exactly. And the many trips that Bill Clinton had made, you know, on the, and on Hillary. the jet. And Hillary. And Hillary. And yet it doesn't make an ounce of the news. And, you know, it's it's to show that she's being protected by the, the media and the corporate media. Um, and again, like, I know I know my reason why I'm very grateful that she did not make it. Um, but Why? 
Well, my reasons because I know I I know what a warmonger she is. I also know right. how how completely evil she is. Um, from yeah. our from our friend Kathy O'Brien, not only from that, but right. from what I've witnessed, and from the coups, and from the, the 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 murder and mayhem that she has unleashed. You know, it's almost like she's like Lady yeah. Bathory. You know, you know who Lady Bathory was, yeah? I don't know who is it. Oh, I can't remember. Oh, Google her up. You'll you'll just okay. You, yeah, but um, so who is it? Oh, it was this woman, um, I believe she was uh, from Romania, maybe it was like 17th century, a very, very wealthy, very wealthy aristocrat who had uh-huh. a penchant for young girls. Um, she liked to bathe in their blood. Oh, I heard of her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and she got away with it. Because everybody would say, oh, well, yeah. she's too, you know, this is a fine lady. She would, you know, no. And then they finally found well, out. Well, also, they make it so hideous that people are like, that is, there's no way stuff like right. that goes on. No way. No way that Bill Clinton and, 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 and these highfalutin folks are, are involved in, in pedophilia. And it's, and it's so shocking to the system and people don't want to believe it that they call it a conspiracy theory or whatever and they back her and that was what was so shocking but i'm so i'm glad about that but you yeah i, I know i want to know your reasons like what are your reasons the least of it yeah what are your reasons that you're happy that hillary did not make it well the things you said of course i i agree with uh but that she it's just, uh, she'll do anything for money. I mean, mm-hmm. that's all she cares about is money. And that offends me because, you know, uh, I, I don't, I don't like, you know, a lot of times young girls will come up to me and they say, oh, you know, I just got to thank you because. Uh, you made me who I am. And, you know, a lot of people have said that to me, you know, and, um, I'll look at them, you know, and I'll be like, well, sometimes I'm glad they're saying that to me, (laughs) just looking at them. But other times like, man, you, you're, you, you're just, you're fucking nothing but a dirty whore. Mm. I, I don't hope I didn't help you do that. (laughs) (laughs) don't fucking blame me i got enough of my own sins to answer for on judgment day there but don't be fucking implicate me and you're fucking that you'd do anything for money jesus christ i I think that's one of the i think that's one of the 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 worst sins because there is there it's 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 true there's when you do anything for money you you there is no limit. There is no limit, and that's why. Check this out. Yeah. Go Check ahead. this out. She takes the money from starving Haitian earthquake victims. I mean, there is just nothing more fucking vampire than that story. I mean, that's a fucking vampire. Forget bathing in the blood. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. I mean, and yeah, it is. And uh, <coughs> she took the fucking money. And, you know, what was disgusting to me is that I I and other people, Cynthia McKinney, other people, you know, we've been saying that for, you know, I said it in my 2012 campaign that she had stolen money from, like, <laughs> starving Haitian children. And then she's over here. Uh telling black people how you know they owe her their vote i mean it, there are so many layers to it that is just so ugly and um but that's that's who they are that's who the world leaders or the people who, that we've been told are leaders that's how they they are and it's like it, it shouldn't be like it's we shouldn't let that go on because i do think we'll be judged well i do think we're judged for the people we elect we definitely are 
Well, it's the and it's the vulture mentality, and I get. I guess it is. I guess it is something that, like what you said before earlier, is like if it's so heinous, people don't want to believe it. But it's that vulture mm-hmm. mentality where, like, even she was, you know, she was referring to a young boy who was, I but maybe it was from Syria or from Aleppo, from where where he was, you know, sitting there just like you know covered in blood, and all these children in Syria that was happening there, mm-hmm. and she was using this child as like some kind of 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 promotional thing about why it's important for her to be you know to become president i wanted to, and i wanted to scream through the television set you know these kids these these people that are being bombed in these other countries is because of people like hillary and and obama i mean well well it is because of her it's not because of people like her it's yeah because you're of right. her you're right you're right <laughs> and there aren't i don't think there's too many like her uh, but you know there, there's a lot of them, and they they seem to all be very powerful. Because I guess you gotta, there aren't that many people who will do what it takes to become that powerful. Yeah, boom. Hopefully, boom. Exactly, exactly. Um, we were talking about earlier. You know, nobody nice is nobody nice is the head of any place. Well, that's why Bernie. Well, they, maybe they are. That's. I, it, I think that's why I mean, they couldn't. That's probably the exception rather than the rule and i think that's why they couldn't let bernie move any further forward i think he got i my intuition or my feeling was that he got um he i feel like he got threatened or told you know to bow down to the queen um well i think his shit got exposed he his shit got exposed and um you know he uh, you know, like it does, because I mean, come on, you're not going to be there for 30 years by being nice and doing any good shit for people. Let's be real. And you think they have something on everybody there? Do you? Well, they did. They, they, they. I remember the exact story. It was that they came with stuff about his wife Jane, and that she had bankrupted the school she worked, the school where she worked. The, she bankrupted it. So, you know, right there, it, it's exactly what people say when they criticize socialism. So we're, we've got that not too, not too far. And I think, you know, it, it was just amazing to see secret after secret exposed because that, like that, you know, some people are saying, well, this was a coup. I say a coup against bullshit. But it really was a coup and a counter coup is what they say, because, you know, uh, information uh, that's um, no longer secret, right. held secret because of blackmail and shit like that, that they keep stuff secret. Um, it's all exposed. So that's kind of really another good reason that I'm so happy because when there are no no more secrets, when they are not able to keep secrets from mm-hmm. the people any longer, they can't have power because knowledge is power. And when it's in the people's hands, as it was in the hands of Anonymous and, uh, you know, all the people who did that kind of work, uh, you know, <laughs> that's why he won, too. Facts matter to people. Data matters to people. And they've been for centuries selling us some other bullshit while they um, keep secrets for each other at our expense. But that isn't going to happen anymore. And that's just great. In, in, all, in all of your travels and the work that you've done, have you personally, have you met Donald Trump or do you know him personally? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I've met him. It's funny. Um in my second, I've done four HBO specials stand up, you know, and in my second one, Donald Trump uh, was kind enough to drive me on stage. I, I filmed it at the Trump Resort in um, Atlantic City. Yeah. And um, he drove me on stage in his old uh, Packard. It was a real fancy Packard uh, at the opening of, of that special. And, you know, he, he's always been very nice to me and uh uh you know just a real nice guy and uh then also when i had my talk show in 1998 one of my most fun 
segments and shows was um, when I had on Donald Trump and Michael Moore, and, you know, we had a three-way debate about our country. This was in 1998. And I say to Donald, boy, you ought to run for president because you've got a lot of really great ideas. And... uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and he did. And we agreed on a lot. And, uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, Michael Moore was there, too. And they agreed on many things, too. So, you know, uh, it's just interesting to have seen that clip again in, in the last couple months I watched it. But, yeah, he had really great ideas. Uh, his greatest idea, which this is what nobody uh, on the left ever talks about because they're they're more into how things make them feel than actual facts because that's part of mind control too and uh, you know the Obama administration as well as the Clinton administration you know they were um, you know it was a lot of mind control going on and you know it Christine yes I do yeah and uh, so you know, in collusion with the with the corporate media, and people are being told what to think, not how to think. You know, people should learn what he was really talking about, and that's what they say his ground game was. He would go and speak to twenty or thirty thousand people in person. And that was his ground game, and they would hear his platform. Uh, you know, and it was not censored through media. They would hear his actual ideas, and they were really impressed with them and i was impressed too because i actually read what each candidate was saying and what they stood for but he's against common core and to most parents in this country and teachers as well you know that's uh like right up there with no child left behind and it's just a corrupt education system that promotes racial profiling so that kids in in the inner cities can, um, you know, get shitty schooling and then be ripe for either prison or, or going to war. Going to the war. So right. Common Core is the worst fucking thing we've ever had in this country as far as our children are concerned. And, uh, you know, it, it's just, you know, there shouldn't be like, uh, there shouldn't be federal regulation of education. That's really bad. I, I think people should be allowed to choose what they're children learn and uh you know they also should be able to protest when their kids are given six hours of homework every (laughs) night you know it's just wrong it just sucks so i'm glad that he's against that because that really needs to go and uh you know the things he outlined that he would do in his first hundred days you know most of them i totally agree with if you notice hillary didn't even make a list like that because she didn't have to say what she would do in the first hundred days or offer any suggestion of appointees or anything like that, because she only needs a couple words to get people to vote for. Launch war. That's all she needs. To, that's really what it is. She Launch just needs war. The, she needs the word racist and, um, you know, the code, the, the code words that really pack a lot of punch. I know that Donald Trump. And, uh, in fact, she. Mm-hmm you know, has just said terribly racist stuff herself forever. And she has, there, no one ever holds her accountable for anything she does. Like, it really blew me away that Donna Brazil and Debbie Wasserman Schultz had to resign and get in trouble because they helped her cheat. But nobody ever hold her responsible that she right. cheated. right, right. Right. They go, oh, you know, Donna Brazil gave her the answers or gave her the question. Well, how come nobody ever said, man, Hillary, she she cheated? Well, how about the most? She's always got somebody else to blame, like a lot of. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of her fans. They just want to be able to sanctimoniously rail at people rather than actually uh, having facts that they're. And how can she, their knowledge how, how can they on one side of the mouth say that ISIS or ISIL or whatever the newest machination of Al Qaeda, whatever the boogeyman is that that they want us to to believe now, that they say that those those groups are funded 
by Saudi Arabia and Qatar. And then yeah. out of the other mm-hmm. side of the mouth, the Clinton Foundation is getting millions of dollars. Bill Clinton's getting like a million dollar birthday present from Saudi Arabia. They're getting money from Qatar. Yeah. If it was you, Roseanne, if Roseanne Barr got millions and millions of dollars from these regimes that are, I mean, well, let's talk about being brutal to, uh, yeah. I mean, you want to talk about homophobia and uh, and, 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 yeah. and women, uh, women's rights. There's no yeah, such thing. She takes money from, from brutal, government brutal that, dictators. you know, whip rape victims and throw gays off buildings. And the gay, and then, and then all you see is a bunch of gays and women supporting her. It, it's fucking, that's MK Ultra mind control. Boom. There's no other way to, uh, dis- to uh, describe that. But, they, but the, the answer was always, but she's a woman. She's a mother. Yeah. Right? I know, and I love, yeah. Well, I can take it when, you know, oh my God, don't get me started on that one. That just fucking so pisses me off. Because I call them demonists which is a Democrat feminist <laughs> and um, they're demonists. And, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's just anything for the party. It's like Stalinist crazy. It isn't feminism. I know that. And, and she is not a feminist because no. feminists, Feminists aren't warmongers. They they don't like arm both sides of every um, conflict on earth and then pocket the money that they get from selling weapons. That's not feminist. And who suffers the most from war? Women and children. That's right. Now, um, we had played earlier in the beginning of the show, I played... Uh, uh, well, men don't have it too good either. Cause no, you're right. They yes. get, they get, they're out there getting killed and uh, you know for trying to protect and fighting and so are women of course but uh, nobody has it good under that system of um, endless war nobody except the people who the vultures. you know are at the top the and, vultures you yeah. know the top of the pyramid yeah the vulture of capitalists we had war uh, profiteer since you had uh your, you yourself actually had uh, you put you threw your hat in the ring in 2012 for yeah. uh, for the presidential. I want to talk about that. I want our listeners to know about that because okay. I don't think I don't think people knew that. I mean, I knew, but I don't think that most mm-hmm. most most people, especially our listeners, I don't think that they knew that you even were in the running. Let's talk about that. You were originally okay. wanted to go. You originally wanted to run with the Green Party, correct? Well, you know, Cynthia McKinney, as you know, had been the nominee of the Green Party. Yes. And uh, she asked me to, she asked She asked me if I was willing to carry the water, and I said, I'll carry the water. Because I didn't, I didn't think anyone else was going to, mm-hmm. and I was right. But, <laughs> but anyway, um, so I said yes, because, you know, um, I like Cynthia, and, uh, you know. She's a brave woman. Yeah, so, um, and she acted as my campaign manager, and um, I became the the nominee of the Black Caucus of the Green Party. And uh, as that, well, I also made a movie, a documentary about it called Those Answer President. But as that person who campaigned under that heading, Man, I, I thought I I thought I knew a lot, but boy, I didn't know nothing, <laughs> and uh, I learned a lot. But uh, yeah, so I did not I did not get the uh, nomination of the Green Party, uh, uh, primarily because the Green Party and Jill Stein and Michael Feinstein they had no idea that there was a Black Caucus. Oh, Oh, Jesus. Yeah. I'm not lying. Right. uh, Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. They were shocked. Right. And then they they found it offensive that it was me. Um, But anyway, so then I went. Cynthia got uh, me hooked up with Cindy Sheehan. And so it was, uh, Cynthia said it was two Cindy's and a Roseanne. And we figured out how I could get the uh, nomination of the Peace and Freedom Party, another 
another California Socialist Party, which was, you know, the Black Panther Party in California, mm. uh, of which Eldridge Cleaver was the one of the first uh, nominees. But anyway, so that's that's the uh, the nomination I did get. So it was really hard to make it on the ballot, and I realized during the run that making it to the ballot is is really what democracy is all about. It's not about voting for one or two sanctioned candidates. It's for being able to get your ideas as well as your nominee on the ballot. And it's almost impossible. And, of course, now it's even more impossible than it was in 2012, and it was really hard then. What was great about my campaign is in the end when you do your autopsy, your your political autopsy, is uh, we figured out that I had paid $1 per vote, and that's what they care about, you know, whereas Obama had spent uh, $2,500 per vote. So I felt like that that was really showing that we don't need, you know, I wanted to show that we really don't need money in politics. If, if we have commitment, well, we don't need money and, in politics. You're right. No, but it, also, if, if the media, if the you know, and and, I'm, and it's not going to happen because the corporate media is bought and sold. They're they're whores. But yeah, if the corporate, I mean, if the media, if the news, but I think they killed themselves during this. I think during oh, the yeah. election cycle. Oh yeah, they're baby. just all but dead. They're just a walking fucking corpse. Yep, nobody gives a shit. That's why everybody's and going to alternatives. And we learned all the way through that. You know, they never talked about issues at all. It was all about Donald Trump said his hair. Fat. Yeah. Well, and also that's why that's why I think that the that the podcast world and alternative media, uh-huh. on social social media, is so big right now because people who listen to like out of the box radio. It's not just that's on their TV dial and they're gonna they're gonna channel surf and catch it and it's us it's yeah. it's it's some institution telling you what they think that you need to you know like we're just gonna right. tell you this we're gonna lead you down the path well you know? it's just somebody telling you what they're paid to tell you exactly but with with the podcast world people are seeking out the information because they're like hey you know what yeah. I like I like the people that that she's talking to um and, and, and it makes sense to me I, it makes sense i'm getting goosebumps from it 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 applies to me and it's truth it feels yeah. like truth so they're seeking out the information yeah. and that is a powerful revolution in media because we've never had that no we've never had it because we just had like you know very tightly controlled information and then uh you know they go from there like i say they not only manufacture consent, but also dissent. So that's their way of controlling the dissent that's brought against them. It, it's actually brilliant. But any independent dissent is just squashed and, you know, you know, or worse, those people just completely removed. You know, whether it's into prison like uh, Chelsea Manning or... Or just uh, like Seth Rich, you know, removed. Or, you know... Martin Luther King? uh, Yeah. Or, like, just completely censored. Like, uh, I, you know, I can't tell you how many, you know, how many of those code words have been used on me. And, you know, it feels pretty devastating. But, um, you know, if you can hang in there and keep going pretty soon... Uh, they they do end up, it seems, just hanging themselves because bullshit can only go so far. Truth can go all the way and keep on going. Oh, yeah. But bullshit, bullshit always hits the wall sooner or later because it's finite and it's a lie. So, like, that's what I say about Hillary. Like, well, you know, winners do not need to cheat. In fact, they never cheat. And that's why they win. Losers cheat. And that's just true. Yeah. Yeah, it is. My son, my son said, well, Mom, that's not always true. Because sometimes cheaters do win. And that is true. For a while, I said, yeah. Temporarily. For a while. Yeah. Yeah. Because there is a point where arrogance, like, you know, uh, this 
Jewish saying. Uh, it says that arrogance and ignorance are that they're married, you know, and 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 one is never without the other. Mm. So you're you're never arrogant without also being ignorant, and you're never ignorant without also being arrogant. So eventually, those two things just implode a person. And you don't have to do too much about it. It says, well, don't, you know, it, tell, it teaches us, well, don't step in there and take that karma. Just let it uh, work itself out. And, you know, you, you just stay clean. And, uh, you know, you stay clean because it'll take itself out. And like they say, a lie can run around the world twice while the truth is still putting its shoes on. Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I think I think what's happening now too. I think it, there is a universal conscious. I think people are waking up, and yeah, um, definitely. It's not. It's 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 kind of like a baby that wakes up from a nap. In the beginning, too, it's 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 a little you know the cranky and 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 you mm-hmm. know outbursts and things like that. But on the whole, yeah. I really do think that people are waking up and they're seeing through the bullshit. They're, they're, this is the first Well, time. I know that so many Americans saw through the corporate media, knew it was fucking lying and bullshitting them with their wonderful Hillary stories that we had to swallow every single night while they eviscerated Trump and never said anything almost negative. Like CNN, almost nothing negative about Hillary. And, um, you know, people saw through that. So that's why it's a great day. And you may not know it yet, but that is a revolution when, when, uh, you know, the consumerist, the world's number one consumerist nation actually finds its way to uh, the, you know, the unvarnished raw truth. Trump held up a mirror and told us who we were. And a lot of people didn't like it at first, but it was true. Yeah, I had a, I had a little bit of an epiphany today where it my my thoughts ran that whatever needs to be healed is being revealed. And yeah, that oh, I totally hear and that. right and we need these characters. Yeah. It's kind of like the Joseph Campbell thing where the the story. Yeah. you know what makes Darth Vader Darth Vader. It's not just that he was just born Darth Vader. There's a reason why he became Darth Vader. It's the same thing with Maleficent. If you if you saw the film, um, it's Angelina Jolie. Okay, I don't care about her. But the idea was, you know, she just wasn't an, an evil queen. Just 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 popped out that way. You know, she became that way. And I think that people are facing their own shadows because it's easy to point to Trump and say, well, he's a misogynist or he, you know, uh, whatever is a womanizer or whatever. But then. There's something within each one of us that we need to clear. Maybe we're not, maybe you know, maybe we're not. Uh, we don't behave in the same ways, but there is some dark side of us that we also need to expose and clear. In yeah. many respects, and I think that's what. Yeah, happened. he showed us who we were. Absolutely, and who we were was, you know, a bunch of people who, um, you know, run around calling other people names, um, unfair, unfairly run around calling other people devastating names. And, uh, you know, that's, that's big. It's not small. And then I think also, uh, to see, to begin to see, I mean, it depends on how deep you see into it, you know, it really does. Because like after a while I could look at Hillary and see like, there's a woman, she has no ideas. She has no vision at all. All, t- all she does is just uh, say Donald Trump doesn't respect women. Well, she doesn't respect women either, especially women who accuse her husband of rape. She goes out of her way then to destroy their entire lives, like they do in Saudi Arabia, her largest donor. But, um, you know, I mean, seriously. She had no ideas, and in the middle of it, when they're still out there saying our first woman president about somebody who's pretty immoral, dishonest, and has no ideas, but yet everybody's like, you know, it's very important that we have 
a woman president because we're not sexist. <laughs> it, there was like ten layers of that. Margaret like, Thatcher. Huh? Margaret Thatcher was a woman. <laughs> Lady Bathory was a woman. What the f- Marie Antoinette was a woman. <laughs> right. It's I know. And then they say they're not. They say they're not sexist when all that mattered to them was gender. That was all that mattered to them. Yeah. And they say they're not sexist. They're yeah. not sexist. And then she says, you know, she. You know, she's got great ideas for America. And actually, when she goes out there, it just stuck in my craw when she's out there telling, uh, you know, courting the black vote and talking about how we do have racism in this country. And, of course, we do have pockets of it. Yeah. But um, but uh, she's saying all that while it was her husband who locked up, you know, who passed the laws that uh, locked up one in six black men in this country, more more than were held, you know, yes. at any time, including under slavery. Yes. And then she's out there offering to fix the shit she caused, and people are buying it. Yeah. And the fact there's no job, she says she didn't bring jobs. Well, how about we just reverse NAFTA that your husband signed? Yes. Yeah. You know, how yeah. about we just reverse that? And stop TPP, which I know uh, Donald Trump is, yeah. is saying that he's vowing that he's going to stop it. Although in between now and then, uh, the, the the Twitters or whatever, there's a lot of talk that Obama is going to try and shove TPP as fast oh, as possible. Oh, yeah, he's going to try. He's going to try to shove everything that he was put there to do. He's going to try to shove it in right at the end. I mean, he already made, you know... Uh, you know, when I talked about man- manufacturing dissent, too, like while everybody was out there getting arrested at Keystone Pipeline, you know, and that was in the news cycle, you know, he passed, uh, you know, laws to to create two more pipelines. So whenever they're out there telling you that they're against something, be sure to look twice. Be sure to look twice. Right, exactly. And it was under a Democratic president that um, the idea that you can assassinate anyone under the NDAA, you could kill anyone for right. any reason, that was passed. The NSA yep. mass mass spying scandal, that whole thing has been um, shown to be true and pushed through very, very uh, strongly. And under the Obama administration, also whistleblowers have been prosecuted and attacked more than in any, uh, any other administration. Um, and then the CIA. I'll tell you, drones. our whistleblower friends, we have to say this, they have been living in terror under Obama for years. Yeah. And they're all very happy that Trump won because, you know, he, he, he isn't uh, the one who's out there advocating for the destruction of whistleblowers. That would be quite amazing. I mean, I, I think what, what was the one of the things, though, one of the things I think he said that w- he would do immediately when he becomes president or no, maybe he said that she belonged in jail, that Hillary. Oh, yeah. He said that, that at the debate at the debate. I know when he said that, I was like, I was like, oh, shit. Oh, oh. oh that, that was gangsta. <laughs> that was gangsta. <laughs> Oh, wasn't it that's what my son said my son said oh shit that is gangsta i was like be careful you don't want to be suicided oh can we talk about that roseanne the body count yeah. of the clinton i mean i don't want to talk about it too much oh. but yeah what is up with well it's on youtube you just have to go in there and or, or just google clinton body count it's like it's over 120 people that like you know they i mean to be fair they do call it a lot of a suicide one because, you know, people can get really depressed and then shoot themselves in the back of the head six or seven times. <laughs> they can really get that depressed, Christine. Six you know or that. seven times. <laughs> <laughs> or they're just looking into the irreg- irregularities of the primaries and, and the whole Dirty Sanders thing, and then they end up, you know... Uh, rob- they weren't robbed, but apparently it was a break in, and nobody took anything. But they also ended up killing them, you know, shooting them in the head or something. It's crazy. Right? It's crazy. Well, there's a lot of depressed people. Out there. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> 
Um, we've got a, we've got a couple minutes left in the show and I just wanted to open it up to you because, um, I know we've talked about the election. I know we've talked about also the, the movie Roseanne for president. How can people, first of all, how can people, uh, watch Roseanne for president? How can they, can, how can they catch it? I think, I think they go on, uh, direct TV and, uh, Amazon and Netflix, all those things. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they go all those things, uh, all those things, uh, uh, iTunes, all those things where stuff is. But they should watch it because I really feel like both Bernie, not to mention Hillary, but both Bernie and Trump borrowed a lot of the yeah. concepts that I yes. had. And I'm so glad that finally I have it on film, the proof that people rip my shit off. <laughs> <laughs> they've been doing it in comedy for a long time. Now you can show they've been doing it in politics too. And congratulations. Yeah, but this time I got the proof uh, and it's so awesome. But, you know, people asked me in 2013, are you, will you run again? And I said, I would run again, uh, but only if I could run as a Republican. And then when I saw Donald Trump doing it and he did what I would have done, which is, you know, try to, um, reboot the entire Republican Party for being uh, massively irrelevant. And he did do that, and uh, that caused a, a huge reboot of the, of the Democrat Party, too. So it's going to be interesting four years. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's going to be very interesting. Oh, and congratulations, uh, marijuana, recreational marijuana. The Oh, I know. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yes. <laughs> That's so wonderful. That is so civilized. I mean, I'm just really thrilled with that. And apparently there were a, a few other states uh, uh, across the country also passed it. So that's a, that's people a come up to me all the time now. And that, you know, since I ran on legalization and they'll just always like hand me some real nice, gorgeous buds wherever I go. And, you know, uh, they were putting it in my fence today that's cool (laughs) well in the the most one of the most one of the most important parts of that too about legalization of 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 marijuana in in general and cannabis and and all of the medicinal properties of it but the, the the thing that i think is most important is the um the way of decriminalizing it so that you don't have these young beautiful uh men and women uh, rotting in jail for... Uh, well, I know. There's another Clinton thing. He made that happen for all these, uh, you know, kids, working-class kids, particularly working-class kids, teenagers of color being in, getting into the jail system for just a small amount of marijuana. It w- really was a war on pot smokers. And, uh, you know, they could take your house and everything in it if they wanted to, and they did. Yeah. So just for a joint, and that's been till recently. So, you know, legalization, as I said, when I ran for president, that's the tip of the spear into uh, getting rid of the stuff that took our country in the wrong direction, the war on drugs, how they brought fascism here. And then there was the other aspect, I think, also with the Clinton crime family on uh, privatization of prisons, which when you start privatized, when you start making yeah. prisons private, I don't think people understand that, but then you have a quota that, that basically you're, you're making a profit off of, of, of p- putting people in jail. Well, here's what it means, Christine. I, here's a good simple way of saying it. It means um, taking public money and putting it in private pocket. That's what it means. Yeah. It's a, it's a heist. Yeah. And uh, it's against public wealth, which, you know, is um, schools, hospitals, roads, infrastructure. And just like she using her private BlackBerry for government secrets or emails, she was privatizing our country's secrets. Yeah. She was putting our country's secrets in the hands of of our enemies and then even bernie goes i'm sick and tired of hearing about her emails you like my bernie yeah (laughs) Yeah, but uh you know even bernie fucking sells out at the end but yeah um yeah because people actually died 
<laughs> it actually had a cost for her, her to do that, like it did in Haiti. And they're all like, oh, <laughs> Hillary, she did her win. <laughs> she did her <a> win. <laughs> well, thank God. I want to smack those people. I mean, seriously, but I use my meditation devices so that I hold back. <laughs> Plus, I, I broke my leg so I can't get out after them stick my foot up their ass. <laughs> so, um, you know, I just have to, like, pray for them. Just pray for them. Just pray for them. Yeah, It'll... pray that they'll wake up some more like the rest of us have done. Well, hopefully they'll hear this program and share it uh, on social media as well and, and get the word out. So, um... <laughs> Yeah, it's a great thing. Uh, the uh, Second American Revolution, where the people, you know, did not do as their masters told them to do. Oh, They deep. thought for themselves. That's it was deep. great. It's great. Here's to freedom, Christine. Nice talking with you. Here's to freedom, Roseanne Barr. I want to thank you so much for spending time with me and our and our listeners. And uh, people can catch you. So you so listen. You got to check out the movie. It's mm -hmm. Roseanne for President. It's perfectly timed with everything that's going on right now. Yeah, and, and it is. Yeah, and you get to see our wonderful Roseanne in 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 action. It's behind the scenes stuff. It's re it's really with you and Johnny, mm -hmm. right? Johnny's there. Johnny uh, is is yeah. There Johnny's in it. He's He's my mentor. He's your man. <laughs> He's my male nurse since I broke my leg. Um, when Johnny came, because he had broken his uh, shoulder, so when Johnny came to help me, the day he came, he was able to fly, and uh, my blood pressure went down 60 points the minute I saw him. Oh. Now, if that ain't love, I don't know. Oh, damn it. Oh, <laughs> you make me believe in love, too. <laughs> That's gorgeous. That's cool. Well, thank you again so much, Roseanne. And, thank oh, you, Christine. And if people want to catch you, the, they can follow you on Twitter, right? Roseanne Barr, The Real Roseanne? No, yeah, The Real Roseanne on Twitter. Okay. I want to encourage people to All check right, that man. out. Thank you so much. I love you, love you, and happy birthday. Love you, love happy you, birthday love you. month, Thanks, honey. Scorpio Thanks, Mama. Honey. All right. Yeah. And get, yeah, bitches. <laughs> get better. <laughs> Thanks. All Thanks. right, babe. Bye. And that was the wonderful Roseanne Barr talking about the election, talking about a whole bunch of stuff. You can catch her on Twitter and also catch the DVD. Go, go check out the film Roseanne for President. And that's it for today's show. I just wanted to thank you so much for joining us. Remember, you can please tell your friends and family about Out of the Box Radio. You can subscribe so you never miss an episode on iTunes and also we're on iHeartRadio. So just look up Out of the Box Radio, Out of the Box Radio with Christine, and you'll find us. And also, we will make available to you the YouTube video of this program so you can share it on social media, send it out as emails, and all that good stuff. So... Until next week, I want to remind you, as always, to think outside of the box. I'm Christine Blasdale. Bye for now.